Section 54 of Happy Days. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Greg Giordano. Happy Days by A. A. Milne. Chapter 54 The Adventurer lionel norwood from his earliest days had been marked out for a life of crime when quite a child he was discovered by his nurse killing flies on the window-pane this was before the character of the housefly had become a matter of common talk among scientists and lionel like all great men a little before his time had pleaded hygiene in vain he was smacked hastily and bundled off to a preparatory school where his aptitude for smuggling sweets would have lost him many a half holiday had not his services been required at outside left in the hockey eleven with some difficulty he managed to pass into eton and three years later with one would imagine still more difficulty managed to get superannuated at cambridge he went downhill rapidly he would think nothing of smoking a cigar in academical costume and on at least one occasion he drove a dog-cart on sunday no wonder that he was requested early in his second year to give up his struggle with the little go and betake himself back to london london is always glad to welcome such people as lionel norwood in no other city is it so simple for a man of easy conscience to earn a living by his wits if lionel ever had any scruples which after a perusal of the above account of his early days it may be permitted one to doubt they were removed by an accident to his solicitor who was run over in the argentine on the very day that he arrived there with what was left of lionel's money reduced suddenly to poverty norwood had no choice but to enter upon a life of crime except perhaps that he used slightly less hair oil than most he seemed just the ordinary man about town as he sat in his dressing gown one fine summer morning and smoked a cigarette his rooms were furnished quietly and in the best of taste no signs of his nefarious profession showed themselves to the casual visitor the appealing letters from the princess whom he was blackmailing the wire apparatus which shot the two of spades down his sleeve during the coon can nights at the club the thimble and pea with which he had performed the three card trick so successfully at epsom last week all these were hidden away from the common gaze it was a young gentleman of fashion who lounged in his chair and toyed with a priceless straight cut there was a tap at the door and masters his confidential valet came in well said lionel have you looked through the post yes sir said the man there's the usual check from her highness a request for more time from the lady in tight street with two pence to pay on the envelope and bank notes from the professor as expected the young gentleman of hill street has gone abroad suddenly sir ah said lionel with a sudden frown i suppose you better cross him off our list masters yes sir i had ventured to do so sir i think that's all except that mr snooks is glad to accept your kind invitation to dinner and bridge to-night will you wear the hair-spring coat sir or the metal clip lionel made no answer he sat plunged in thought when he spoke it was about another matter masters he said i have found out lord fairley's secret at last i shall go to see him this afternoon yes sir will you wear your revolver sir as it's a first call i think so if this comes off masters it will make our fortune i hope so i'm sure sir masters placed the whiskey within reach and left the room silently alone lionel picked up his paper and turned to the agony column as everybody knows the agony column of a daily paper is not actually so domestic as it seems when mother apparently says to floss come home at once father gone away for a week bert and sid longing to see you what is really happening is that barney hoker is telling judd batson to meet him outside the duke of westminster's little place at three a m precisely on tuesday morning not forgetting to bring his jemmy and a dark lantern with him and floss's announcement next day coming home with george is judd's way of saying that he will turn up all right and half thinks of bringing his automatic pistol with him too in case of accidents 
in this language which of course takes some little learning lionel norwood had long been an expert the advertisement which he was now reading was unusually elaborate lost in a taxi between baker street and shepherd's bush a gold-mounted umbrella with initials j p on it if ellen will return to her father immediately all will be forgiven white spot on foreleg mother very anxious and desires to return thanks for kind inquiries answers to the name of ponto bis dat qui cito dat what did it mean for lionel it had no secrets he was reading the revelation by one of his agents of the skeleton in lord fairley's cupboard lord fairley was one of the most distinguished members of the cabinet his vein of high seriousness his lofty demeanour the sincerity of his manner endeared him not only to his own party but even astounding as it may seem to a few high-minded men upon the other side who admitted in moments of expansion which they probably regretted afterwards that he might after all be as devoted to his country as they were for years now his life had been without blemish it was impossible to believe that even in his youth he could have sown any wild oats terrible to think that these wild oats might now be coming home to roost what do you require of me he said courteously to lionel as the latter was shown into his study lionel went to the point at once i am here my lord he said on business in the course of my ordinary avocations the parliamentary atmosphere seemed to be affecting his language i ascertained a certain secret in your past life which if it were revealed might conceivably have a not undamaging effect upon your career for my silence in this matter i must demand a sum of fifty thousand pounds lord fairley had grown paler and paler as his speech proceeded what have you discovered he whispered alas he knew only too well what the damning answer would be twenty years ago said lionel you wrote a humorous book lord fairley gave a strangled cry his keen mind recognized in a flash what a hold this knowledge would give his enemies shafts of folly his book had been called already he saw the leading articles of the future we confess ourselves somewhat at a loss to know whether lord fairley's speech at plymouth yesterday was intended as a supplement to his earlier work shafts of folly or as a serious offering to a nation impatient of levity in such a crisis the cabinet's jester in whom twenty years ago the country lost an excellent clown without gaining a statesman was in great form last night lord fairley has amused us in the past with his clever little parodies he may amuse us in the future but as a statesman we can only view him with disgust well said lionel at last i think your lordship is wise enough to understand the discovery of a sense of humour in a man of your eminence but lord fairley was already writing out the cheque end of section fifty four recording by greg giordano newport ritchie florida